Hello, friends of the University of the Gambia and all of my friends from Nigeria. I welcome you to this Masterful Speakers Forum. And the focus of the Masterful Speakers Forum is how to become, how to become a Masterful Speaker. So a Masterful Public Speaker, right? That is exactly what will be our focus this evening. It's a forum, remember. That means you're going to be asking questions. That also means that definitely I'm going to be sharing some things with you. I am David Lawal, and I'm often called the Masterful Speakers Coach. You know, the Masterful Speakers Network is a fellowship of Masterful Speakers who are committed, excitedly committed to helping fellow Masterful Speakers to keep speaking masterfully. And we have all of these Masterful Speakers from several parts of Africa. And we also partner in a Masterful Speakers Network with trainers from seven countries of the world, you know, and expanding. In fact, Gambia is going to be one of those countries very, very, very soon. So we partner with countries like the, uh, we train us from the UK, USA, Canada, South Africa, Ghana, uh, Cameroon, and Nigeria. And you can imagine we are adding Gambia, we are adding, all, we are adding several other countries where they speak English in Africa and many other parts of the world. So if you are here this evening, and I will just repeat it again, if you can hear me and if you're excited, go to the chat section and type excited 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 so what i'm going to do is i'm going to reach out to those people on the call right now and i wanted to go tell your friends take the link share it with your friends share it on your departmental group tell them we have started you know it's going to be a fantastic time particularly for those of you who want to become master public speakers i want to encourage you let us make this participatory. I'm not just going to be the one teaching this evening. We are going to be learning together. I am sure that you have questions. I am sure that you also have had experiences in speaking. So I, I don't believe that everyone on this call is a beginning speaker. I believe that there are others of you who are on this call who have been speaking and all that you want to do. Okay, I really have the feedback i'm getting right now i'm hearing that the audio is not clear uh can you hear me is anyone hearing me very well can anyone hear me very well someone just told me the audio is not very clear and i would really appreciate that feedback so particularly uh, it is very clear from my side Okay, great. Thank you so much. Uh, I, I can't really pronounce the name, a Hauge or something like that. You get the point. You're going to teach me how to pronounce your name very soon, though. So for those who are watching on YouTube, could you give me feedback? Is the, is the audio quality now clear or what exactly do you think is the problem? I think that is from YouTube. I guess that's the that's the complaint from YouTube, and that's very it's very important that we have a clear audio on YouTube. All right, so uh, let us keep moving. It's possible that it's the network over there. So yeah, let's keep moving. So what we are going to do quickly right now is that we are going to go round the table, and I'll call your name. You introduce yourself to us. You tell us a bit about yourself and what you're looking for to gain in uh, and exactly what do you want to achieve when you finally become a masterful public speaker. So let me go first of all to Mama Do. You know, I don't really, I'm not from Gambia, I'm from Nigeria, okay? So I might not be able to pronounce your name very well. So I hope you forgive me. So Mama Do, Jalo, so if, if you know you're the one I'm talking to, could you just unmute yourself? Hello? Yeah, this is Musa Jobe speaking now. So Musa, okay, go ahead. Are you are you kidding me? I'm hearing you loud and clear. And um, you know, um, thank you for the introduction. It's pretty much good. I am happy to be part of this family as well. Awesome, Musa. So would you tell us a bit about yourself? Uh, yes, um, I am probably an elderly person at the University of the Gambia. I'm in my final year. I'm heading towards my final semester. 
but I had a pretty much experience that I want to see uh, with you all. So this is why I am just yet in becoming a speaker. Great. I, I love that. I love the fact that you're still chasing your dream and you have many things that you want to share with the world. And I'm sure that the world can now wait to hear you. I too can now wait. Thank you so much, friend. I'm so happy to be connected with you, really. So let us go over to Musa I B A H Ba Musa Ba. Can you unmute yourself, Musa I Ba? Pardon me. Teach me how to pronounce your name. You know, I'm from Nigeria. <laughs> yes, sir. All right, go ahead. Yes, I am Musa Iba. Great. So you can go student, ahead. Yeah, a student from the university. And Great. I'm also hoping to learn a lot from this. As you know, public speaking is one of the major problems many students has been experiencing. So I'm looking to forward to learn a lot from you. It's a yeah. joy. It's a joy, Musa Aiba. Great to meet you at this place. I, I must say, great to meet you at this place, right? Uh, somebody is asking me a question. You know, uh, part of part of the people who are supposed to uh, be with us. How how are we gonna go about the program operating both on WhatsApp and Google Meet at the same time? We have to start. Time is going. Uh, I don't know how to answer that question. Except if somebody is going to be giving them some notes, who is going to volunteer? Who is going to volunteer and give them like updates as we are on right now? Can someone just go to that chat room and use that chat room as their as their jotting pad? I wonder who is going to help us with that. Uh, would anyone help us with that? Who wants to help us? Okay, so while we are while we are waiting for someone to help us with that, let us go to Ebrahim C C Ebrahim E B R I M A. So could you introduce yourself to us and let us get you? Uh, good morning. Good morning, sir. Good good evening. Yeah, good evening. What's your name? Yeah, my name is Ibrahim Asise, uh, second year university student, University of the Gambia. Awesome. What are you studying? Yeah. I, where? What are you studying? Um, accountancy. I'm studying accountancy currently on my, on my second year. Oh, great. So talk to us. Why are you here? Uh, for me, public speaking is one of my one of my biggest weaknesses. So, you know, when I when I heard about this about this group, I I want to take this opportunity and learn more from you guys. Yeah, great. Happy to have you here. So let's go to Alhagi Kasama. So Alhagi, what's up? Mm, okay. Good afternoon. Or good evening. Wherever you are. Yeah, good evening. Um, my name is Alahaji Kasama. Um, a student of the University of the Gambia. I've just completed my uh, second year. I'm going to my third year studying geography and English language. Awesome. I'm happy to connect with you, my friend. I'm so <laughs> happy to connect with you. All right. So yeah, I've been. Yeah, go ahead, please. Yeah, I, I say um, I've been inspired by various um, public speakers or motivational speakers on YouTube. I've been following um, various motivational speakers, and they have really inspired me to become one of um, the most powerful public speakers. And I, I, I also have, um, um, I have an experience. I have. You know that I want to share with the world. So I really, though I have been, you know, appearing in public speaking, I, uh, it, um, I want to you know, strengthen my skills in, in in that regard to speak out my mind to to the whole world. So in short, that is why I 
um, decided to join this particular platform. I'm back to you. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Alhaji. I'm happy to connect with you. And I'm sure that this will not just be once and then never again. This is going to be something we are going to sustain as a connection so that we can form a network of speakers together and transform the world together. What do you think about that? So let's go to Mamadou Jalo. I think I'm getting a bit more confident with pronouncing the post names because I'm getting just a bit close, you know, maybe not so perfectly, but I'm close. <laughs> Mamadou Jalo. I don't know, maybe I'm murdering this name then. Uh, okay, okay. Mamadou said I would love to speak, but I'm in a public transportation and the background noise would not let him do that. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I really still want to tell you guys, invite your friends, go to that chat room and tell them we have started. Somebody should use that chat room as their note so that we can give them updates because there are certain people who want to be a part of this, but we cannot join because of, you know, data or something. So let us be our brothers and sisters keepers, right? And let us give them updates about it. You can take a screenshot of what's happening here and let them know that we have started so and invite them to also participate in it okay yeah yeah yeah. and for those who are watching via youtube i would also really like to get your comments so that we can track together let me say to all of you as i am going to begin uh, today i'm going to share with you uh something i always share with my masterful speakers at the beginning of the international masterful speakers masterclass you know, I'm going to just do that for you today. And then once I'm done with that, I would take your questions. Now, the questions do not have to be based on the things I have said. The questions have to be basically based on the things that you most care about. OK, and while I'm speaking, I really like feedback. I, I'm not one who would keep asking you. Can you hear me? Can you can you not hear me? The only way I would know that you're hearing me is when you're interacting with me in the chat section. So do me that favor. Give me that sense of peace, that sense of togetherness that I'm speaking to people. Right. Since you guys cannot turn on your videos, I really appreciate if you could turn on your videos so that we can have a bit of interaction so that, you know, when I say something that hits on and then you shake your head, I would have that kind of confidence that, yes, I am saying something that hits on and, you know, that, that, that would pump me and I would be able to keep on firing. But, you know, when I'm just staring into just pictures and, and icons and all of that, I don't think I'll be able to flow that very much. But no problem. I do trust your judgment and I do trust that we're going to work together in the comment section so that we can have a fantastic experience together today. Let me just script the indulgence of Sam Musa Jobe uh, to kindly mute himself uh, for now. You know, some people are getting curious in the in the whatsapp group asking you know what is happening now some people are actually sending me private messages so let me just uh quickly respond to that person who is sending me a private message on whatsapp um somebody is asking what's happening right now could you guys go to that whatsapp chat room and just type let them know what's happening right now you know it's going to give them a sense that something is happening what is happening right now okay kindly Hello, I'm not getting you clearly. Can you kindly come in again? Okay, who is speaking? This is Musa speaking. Okay, so Musa, Musa you. can you hear me at all now? Hello? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, um, if only you can kindly increase your volume a bit. Um, we, 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 we're not getting you clearly. It was clear earlier on. But then now, you know, it is breaking up. Probably it's the network as well. Okay. And I could hear you clearly. Is it that you could not hear, you can't hear me loud enough?
All right, so I am having to. Okay, so friends, I will no longer be able to pay attention to WhatsApp. If not, I would really affect what we are doing right here. That is why I need your help. I need your help to go to the chat room and let them know what is happening. If not, they will be troubled and you will not be able to get the very best from me over here. So I don't need that kind of teamwork. Go to the chat room, help us there. And I don't like the fact that I'm repeating this over and again because it's not helpful okay so let's move right now so i want to share with you five essential ingredients for you to have an effective communication whether you are a speaker or you're a writer these are five things that if you target you would definitely become a masterful speaker then towards the end i'm going to share with you the three tenets of what it means to be a masterful speaker you know when we say that one is a masterful speaker we are saying that that person speaks beyond confidence we are saying that this person speaks having all of those five ingredients of effective communication in their speech or in their writing right and then we also say that there are people who keep to those three tenets of what it means to be a masterful speaker so what are those three tenets we are going to cover those later on as we progress in our time together today and remember what i told you if you do have a question please feel free to ask the question in fact i'm not just saying feel free i'm saying make sure you generate a question before i'm true so that we can have a conversation if not i am just gonna fly off and it's not gonna be of help to you because you know what we can do when when we speak basically is for us to what what we do what we can do when we speak basically is that we can just talk from our own personal experiences uh, and then our limited understanding of our audience but if our audience can ask us questions right we can really get to the to the game we can really get to help them with the thing that they are dealing with you know i've always told my masterful speakers who sign up for the international masterful speakers master class i tell them you say whatever you're going to get from this master class is only going to be 20 percent of of the value that we seek to deliver to you in the master class but the other 80 percent of what we want you to get or of what you desire to get from this master class will come when you share with us what your challenges are what your challenges are rather when you share with us what your own personal challenges are or when you share with us you know those questions that you have and we help you answer those questions so that is when we can really help you get the other 80 percent of the value that we deliver to you and it is true we are known for giving you far more than you're bargained for even in the lecture it's going to be so filled with a lot of substance it's going to be highly robust it's going to be of international standard but we we, we we tell you that's just 20 percent but for you to get the entirety of the 80 percent right right you have to ask your questions so do not be afraid to ask questions because you'll be doing a lot yourself a lot of of good when you do ask questions and off of my sermon on asking questions right so come on sorry about that someone is calling me and again that is simply because you guys ain't giving them updates right in the group that's simply because you guys are not giving them updates in the group so you see they will keep interrupting me if you guys aren't giving them updates in that group so i want to plead with you once again give them updates in the group about what is happening please please if you give the update i will see it over here nobody has done that yet so i've seen that nobody has done that yet could you guys go to that uh to that whatsapp group and let them know what exactly is happening please let them know exactly what is happening in that whatsapp group okay let me call somebody okay thank you so much musaba for doing that so take a screenshot let them know what is happening 
and tell them that coach cannot take any call right now. Nobody should call me. It's not going to help. They will just keep distracting me if they do call me. Okay, so let's let's write on. Let's write on. So what I'm saying is that there are five ingredients. And I want you guys to interact with me, you know, as I'm giving this five ingredients of effective communication. The first ingredient is confidence. And I know confidence is what you guys are targeting. You know, you want to speak confidently. So the first thing you want to aim for really is to speak confidently. That, that's a beginning point. So confident, confidence is the first ingredient. And I want to tell you this. If you just say confidence, I know a lot of you are trying to develop confidence, but that's not all there is to it. It's just the very beginning just the very beginning it's far more than that so what i want to challenge you to do in this class today is that you rise beyond the speaker who speaks confidently rise beyond speaking confidently aim to begin speaking masterfully that's exactly where we want to land you today in a master class so the first ingredient is confidence the second ingredient is clarity the second ingredient ingredient rather it's is clarity the third ingredient the third ingredient is is creativity and the fourth ingredient is consistency and the fifth ingredient is, is credibility let me go over the ingredients once again the first is confidence the second is clarity or clarity the third is creativity the fourth is consistency and the fifth is credibility. So those are the ingredients that you need for you to become an effective communicator, whether as a writer or as a speaker. So basically what I want to help you to achieve this evening is to show you those things and to show you later how that you can develop all of these things uh, so that you can indeed be a masterful speaker. So let me explain what it means to be a confident speaker. When you're a confident speaker, I'm just going to scratch the surface because we go in depth more in the International Masterful Speakers Masterclass, the paid class. So my masterful speakers will not be so happy with me if I give them, if I give you guys a very in-depth course today. But don't worry, I'm going to play with them. I'm still going to go as in-depth as possible. So the first thing is confidence. You being very confident very confident now i know confidence is such a big deal like people really want to be confident they are seeking to be confident they're doing all their best to be confident and you know anybody would do anything to be confident but you know what i often say that you know what if you want to kill your fear of public speaking the proper way to kill it is not to target killing your fear of public speaking. Let me say it again. The proper way to kill your fear of public speaking is not to target killing your fear of public speaking. If you're really interested in becoming a confident speaker, if you're really interested in killing your fear of public speaking, the wrong way is to target killing it. And I know that's a shocking statement. But that's why we are here, right? I want to show you that rather than targeting killing your fear of public speaking you should do a number of things the first thing okay let me explain to you uh, even furthermore why you should not target killing your fear of public speaking because you know what when it comes to the game of speaking in fact today we've we've just had um the masterful speaker of the week celebration series uh where we celebrated one of our in one of our international masterful speakers uh by the name tenacious precious that's a brand name her name is actually Adi Olu uh, Precious uh, and uh, uh, Damola. That, that's her name. Uh, and she has this brand called the Tenacious Precious. She is such a fiery, feisty young woman. She's on fire. She, she is actually bombarding every space, every stage with a lot of value, with confidence, clarity, creativity, consistency, and credibility. She has been the, the true measure of a masterful speaker. And today we had that conversation with her. And she was asked basically about, you know, if you really want to be a very good speaker, how do you develop yourself into a very good speaker? And she said, 
practice, 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 practice. That's what you've got to do. So whatever you want to improve at, you've got to be practicing and practicing and practicing and practicing and practicing. In fact, it was John Maxwell who said, the best way to do a thing is to do it. The best way to do a thing is to do it. So the best way to master public speaking is to do public speaking. But many of you are saying that, you know, the, the, the reason I'm not speaking is because I'm not confident yet. And I'm waiting until I gain some confidence before I can then begin speaking. And I'm like saying, oh my God, you got it wrong. Begin speaking is when you you begin speaking that you can develop confidence. For you to be confident means that, and, and take note of what I'm about to say to you. For you to be confident means that you believe that you are valuable. That's the first thing. And number two, you believe that what you've got to say to people is valuable enough that people will care to listen what you, to what you've got to share with them. So number one, you have to see value in yourself. And number two, you have to see value in what you've got to say to people. That it's something valuable. It's a diamond. It's golden. It's precious. And the people who are going to be listening to you I, I, I will value you for who you are because you've added a lot of value to yourself and then they will value the things that you're going to share with the people that you're going to be sharing what you're going to be sharing with them with right it, it, you believe in yourself enough that those people are really going to value the things that you are going to say to them like i would not be here this evening if i did not believe that the things i'm going to be sharing with you this evening will be valuable that you will find those things very valuable you know and let me tell you this, some of you, the reason you don't see value in the things that you want to share with people is because you think, oh, that is common knowledge. That is common idea. I, I don't think I'm deep enough. I don't think I'm, I'm competent enough. I don't think I have that much wisdom and knowledge and experience for me to share those things with the people, right? Okay, I can go deeper and deeper and deeper on this confidence issue. But let me tell you something. If you want to kill your fear of public speaking, I've told you the wrong way to do it is to target killing your fear of public speaking. The proper way to do it is to target at these three things. Number one, target at gathering, organizing, and spreading knowledge. Gathering, organizing, and spreading knowledge. That's the first thing you've got to target at gathering organizing and spreading knowledge and some of you would say you know what i think i'm, I'm a gatherer of knowledge i think i read i attend conferences i attend seminars i'm even currently on this webinar i'm on this particular forum with the masterful speakers coach you know i attend all of those things but i'm not yet a confident speaker when i get on the stage i still grow cold feet Notice what I said. I did not say gathering knowledge alone. I said gathering, organizing, and spreading knowledge. Gather the knowledge, organize the knowledge, and spread the knowledge. That's exactly what I'm saying. The problem is that too many people are only gathering knowledge. They're reading, they're watching videos, you know, videos of great speakers. That's all they're doing. They're only gathering knowledge but they are not organizing the knowledge. What do I mean by organizing knowledge? It means taking that knowledge and compartmentalizing the knowledge into several aspects of your own life and the life of the people around you, using the information that you've got to, to actually solve some problems in your life and lead yourself to a form of personal transformation and to find other people around you and help them achieve transformation with the information you've accumulated from all of those sources of knowledge from which you've gathered knowledge. But that's not all. Don't just gather organized knowledge, also spread knowledge. That means that you create a platform and begin to share the knowledge that you are gathering. And particularly because you have been organizing the knowledge and aligning the knowledge with the problems that people uh, are having around you and the problems that you have in your own personal life. And you've been able to see results. Uh, you've been able to test the validity of the knowledge that you've got. You're going to have confidence in that knowledge. You're going to believe that that knowledge is valuable. And in that case, what you would do is that you will be confident enough to spread the knowledge. And the more you spread the knowledge, the more you share the knowledge, you are going to get feedback. And as you get feedback, you are going to even get more confidence in the value of the knowledge or the piece of information that you have so that when next you stand before an audience, you know that this very thing I'm going to be sharing with these people really works. And the very fact that people keep giving you a lot of feedback, the fact that people keep giving you a lot of feedback 
would fool your own up uh, your own belief in yourself and that way you can keep on being confident so you can see that that's a crash course on confidence so for me i think confidence is overrated i think a lot of people are are, are causing themselves to miss out on a lot of speaking opportunities because they think they don't have enough confidence enough on confidence now so i want to recognize the presence of nasser osona my amazing friend who has made this possible so nasser i give you a lot of respect so don't worry when i'm done i'm gonna get you to speak so the next thing we're going to talk about is clarity clarity you see clarity is a matter of exactness clarity is the second important ingredient if you're going to be an effective communicator whether as a writer or as a speaker clarity is about exactness is about precision and exactness two things right two pillars of clarity two things you've got to aim for if you're going to be really a speaker who speaks with clarity or clarity whichever way you pr prefer to pronounce it so the first thing is for you to aim at exactness you want to say what you mean and mean what you say you know there are people who keep on second guessing themselves like they say something and then they repeat over and again try to get the exact thing that they're trying to say look at me i am very exact <laughs> okay now i believe that for you to get that exactness you need what i call the mind mouth coordination the mind mouth coordination notice i am not looking at any script i'm speaking to you it's a mind mouth coordination that's happening right now i am not overthinking what i'm saying to you i am not bothered about the words i'm going to use to deliver the message i need to deliver to you i don't i'm not bothered about the words but you know what i have intentions about how i want to feel about what i say i wanted to feel inspired i want you guys to stay connected while i'm speaking so i'm doing everything within my possible best to make sure that you guys are connected while i'm speaking in that case my words are subservient to my intentions and so my words will come to the rescue of my intentions my words will come to obey my intentions so that's the first thing i think you guys need for you to gain clarity as a speaker it's exactness it's you get it's you getting that mind mouth coordination so that your tongue can deliver the message of your heart so that the thoughts on your mind can be expressed through your mouth so that is the mouth mind coordination the mind mouth coordination which is the exactness that is important in, in, in gaining clarity as a masterful speaker. So the next thing, the next thing that is very important, particularly if you want to gain clarity, is precision. You know, precision is basically you saying things in a way that cannot be misunderstood. So it, it's your ability to, to clarify, to 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 characterize the things that you're saying so that people can really 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 get you so that's the point do you get that now so the third thing i want to talk to you about is creativity and here this is an important point but for the sake of time i'm just going to rush through it very important point but for the sake of time i'm going to rush through it creativity creativity is basically finding new ways to do something so creativity in writing or in speaking or in communication is saying things in a way that people have never really heard it you know i've always told people that uh things are up often deeper than their depth and longer than their length and higher than their height and broader than their breath you know you know what what you want to do when you are being creative as a communicator is you want to show people what is unseen about what is seen what is unheard about what is heard what is unsaid about what is said what is unknown about what is already known what is unspoken about what is spoken so that is your own ability to deliver that sort of thing to people so that they can have a sort of feeling and they can have a sort of insight it is your ability to communicate in such a way that when people read you or hear you they would say wow i never saw it in that light before never saw it in that light before so you've got to develop that kind of capacity that's what i want to really help you to do 
So in order to develop that, you have to target at achieving these three pillars of creativity. Number one, a fresh impression. Make sure that whatever you want to speak or write about, you are thinking very much. I want to bring a fresh impression to this matter, to this subject matter, a fresh impression. I want you guys to go to the chat section and type what I'm saying, a fresh impression. Now, the next thing, the next pillar of creativity in effective public speaking or in effective writing for you to be a dexterous writer or a masterful public speaker, you need to not only have a fresh impression or bring a fresh impression to whatever you're talking about or writing about, you also want to bring a fresh description. Just in case you cannot bring a fresh perspective to a situation, you can you can describe that perspective in a different way, in a fresh way. So a fresh description. Make sure you are not belaboring, you're not speaking in cliches. A fresh description, a fresh description, maybe of the problem, of the solution, or of the situation. Whatever it is, make sure that you are aiming at, in your preparation process, you are aiming at a fresh description. The third is a fresh expression. Now, it's always good if you can get this three together, fresh impression, fresh description, and fresh expression. But just in case you fail in getting a fresh impression, meaning you know, you're know you not able to come uh, to, to that subject matter or to that situation from a different angle, from a different perspective, or you're not able to describe the problem or the situation or the you know, whatever it is that you're trying to describe, you know, with in, in a fresh way, then you must never fail to use a fresh expression. Think about it in your preparation phase. Express it that way. Now, one other thing we can notice in creativity is for us to notice the list I've been giving you so far. Notice that the five ingredients of effective communication, they all start with C. That is called alliteration. But then I could make all these five ingredients to rhyme. I could say, communicate confidently, communicate clearly, communicate creatively, communicate consistently, and communicate credibly. So in that case, you're, you're hearing um, confidently, clearly, creatively, consistently, and credibly. That is a rhyme. So there is alliteration, and then there is rhyming. So you can see that there is creativity even in the way that my list is structured. Or I can even come to the sub point on the, the third point that I've given to you. Now, the sub points are for you to, uh, to, to bring a fresh impression, then a fresh description, and a fresh expression. Now, look at it. Fresh impression. Look at that. That's like a rhyme. And then a fresh description. That's a rhyme. And then a fresh uh, expression. That's a rhyme. So you can see that is creativity in communication, whether you're writing or you're speaking. Now, that does not mean you must always do it that way. You can also be creative when you're using imaginative words, telling stories, uh, being analogous, and, and a lot of other things like that, being anecdotal. And many other things that we can cover, you know, I could spend a whole training session even going deeply on creativity. In fact, in the Masterful Speakers Network, I did a two-part 50-minute teachings, <laughs> a two-part 50-minute teachings on this particular subject. So you can see it's really deep and it's deeper than what we can cover this evening. And then the fourth thing is for you to speak with consistency. Now, this one is very, very dicey. Uh, this one is it's not the consistency you are thinking, like showing up every day, even though it's part of it. But I'm talking about a consistent flow while you are a speaker. You know, the rise and the fall. You know, the fact that you bring mystery and then you, you, you clarify and then you bring mystery and you clarify. You bring mystery and you clarify. You rise and you fall and you, you know, you alternate your rhythm. But there has to be a consistent flow of energy from the beginning of your talk to the very end of your talk. There are people who get very tired speaking because the reason they get very tired is because they succumb to that feeling of tiredness. They have not yet understood that speaking is a job. It's a work. And you've got to sweat while you're doing it. 
And if you're really passionate and you're really earnest and you take the job of being a speaker seriously, then you will know it's work. You're trying to tilt the perspective of people. You're trying to persuade them. So in that case, you've got to throw in yourself and throw in your energy. And some people, as soon as they begin to feel that tiredness, they quit. They, they, they let go of themselves and they're like, I think I'm getting tired. And so they, they, they succumb to the tiredness and they do not sustain their energy level from the beginning to the very end of their talk. As a masterful speaker, you don't want to be like that. You want to be electrifying from the start to the very finish. You want to bolt out with energy. You want to sustain the energy in the middle of your talk. And then you want to end, as one of our, uh, as one of our trainers from Cameroon would say, you want to end with a bang. So begin with a bang and end with a bang. Continue in the middle, still banging, 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 bang, bang, bang. You, you understand? From the beginning to the very end, there has to be this energy. You know, and then that does not mean you have to be speaking at the top of your voice from the beginning of your talk to the very end of your talk. You could rise, as I said, and you could fall. But let it be a consistent flow of energy from the beginning of your talk to the very end of your talk. Now, let me quickly show you another idea of consistency, particularly in preparing your talk. Now, look at this. Look at the list I've given you so far. Notice I said the first thing is confidence. The second thing is clarity. The third is creativity. The fourth is consistency. And the fifth is credibility. Now, I've told you that. Now, I want you to notice something about this beautiful list I have just given you. Notice something. Notice that confidence is not a verb. Confidence is a noun. Confidence is not a verb. Confidence is a noun. Now, also notice that Clarity is not an adjective. Clarity is a noun. Notice that creativity is a noun. Notice that uh, consistency is a noun. And then notice that credibility is a noun. Okay? Yeah, that's it. So confidence, clarity, co uh, co uh, creativity, consistency, and credibility look at that list it's it's consistent because the, the items on the list are belong to the same kind of part of speech so that matters a lot i and i could i could as i said i could do an entire training session for like one full hour on that very subject of consistency but this is a limited class we cannot go too far today so that i could get your questions and then now the fifth is credibility you have to speak truth always all the time you know there are people who are like i want to be a creative speaker so they tell a lie i want to be a creative speaker so they tell a lie they tell a lie they tell a lie and I'm like, oh, you know, you don't have to do that. You don't have to be that. You don't have to tell a lie in order for you to be a creative speaker. You have to be speaking the truth always. I've always told my masterful speakers, you know what? Masterful speakers, if it's not credible, it's not powerful. If it's not truthful, it's not masterful. If it's not credible, it's not powerful. If it's not truthful, it's not masterful. We live in a post-truth world since 2016. The Oxford Dictionaries actually had their word of the year as post-truth, meaning that in this world, people do not bother about the truth anymore. But as masterful speakers, we want to be those people who speak the truth to a, a world that is so bereft of truth, a world that hates the truth, a world that is seeking for the truth, particularly for those people who are so anguished, who are so anguished, rather not anguished, those people who are so anguished in their soul because they cannot get the truth. So you want to be one who speaks truth. Do not bend the truth. Speak the truth, not minding whether you're going to lose friends or whether you're going to lose audiences or lose attention. You speak truth because in the end, the truth heals. In the end, it's the truth that sets free. In the end, it's the truth that brings deliverance to the people you're trying to help. If you tell people a lie over time, that lie is definitely going to find itself out and that lie will prove unhelpful. And they are going to blame you. But if you tell them the truth, they may not receive it at first. But over time, they will think about it. They may even resist it at first. But the voice of truth will keep on banging and pounding upon the door of their heart. Someday, 
they will be in the middle of a dire circumstance and they will have no choice than to remember the voice of truth, of the truth particularly that you spoke to them. And that truth will be the only thing that will set them free in the middle of their greatest chaos. And they will remember, you are the one who told them that truth. And in that case, even though they resisted the truth at the very beginning, they would remember that you told them the truth. And even though it might be years after you told them the truth, the truth will still set them free and they will not forget you. Now, here is it, friends. The world promotes the lie. The simple reason the world promotes the lie is because the lie had killed the truth. The lie had killed the truth and taken the garment of the truth and put it on. And, it's per and the lie is parading the entirety of society, every continent of the world and every country in Africa. That lie is parading. So our job as masterful speakers, uh, uh, for those of you who are intending to be masterful speakers, your job basically is to go out into the world, resurrect the truth. And yeah, the truth may not be dead. Maybe the truth is hiding because society doesn't want it. Maybe the truth is hiding because the truth has no honorable garment to put on and be celebrated by society. Her job, you know, her job as masterful speakers is to go find the truth, right? And assure the truth that we are going to be the emissaries of the truth. And we're going to go fight, find the lie. And with the sword of the truth, we are going to destroy the lie. Take the garment of truth from the lie and bring it to the truth. And dress up the truth in the most powerful, most amazing package, most glorious royal apparel. And bring it to the public. Set the truth with our own mastery of communication. And deliver to the truth to the people in the most compelling way so that they might embrace the truth. So masterful speakers or intending masterful speakers, I need to say, our job is to find the truth, dress up the truth, kill the lie, get the dress of the truth from the lie, and then dress the truth in the most glorious way. That way would be masterful speakers. So three tenets. Three tenets of what it means to be a masterful speaker, apart from the fact that you ought to aim at speaking and writing confidently, clearly, creatively, consistently, and credibly, you must be these three things. You must be these three things before we can call you a masterful speaker. Number one, you ought to be a deeply thinking person. A deeply thinking person. Someone has said that 5% of the people think, 15% of the people think they think, while the other 80% of society would rather die than think. I have to say that again. 5% of the people think, 15% of the people think they think. Musa Aiba, thank you so much. 15% of the people think they think, while the other 80% would rather die than think. Let me tell you something. I want you to get out of the 80% of the people who would rather die than think. And I believe you are not there. If you were there, you would not be on this call today. But it's possible that you are amongst the 15% of the people who think they are thinking. And I want to take you out of that 15% of the people who think they are thinking. And I want to bring you to the 5% of the people who are really thinking. The 5% of the people who are really thinking are the people who are trying to recruit to become masterful speakers. Now, when you become a masterful speaker, you want to be a part of the 5% of the people who are really thinking for society. The reason most people cannot solve their problems is because they cannot think. And if you can think and express your thoughts to people and help people to think, oh my God, you will be a masterful speaker. So be a deeply thinking masterful speaker. So that's the first thing. You ought to be deeply thinking. Deeply thinking. Deeply thinking. So that's the first thing. Number two. The second tenet of what it means to be a masterful speaker is to be frankly speaking. And I've already said it. I've already said it. Thank you so much, Abdul, Abdulaziz Badajay. Uh, thank you so much. You know, the second thing, the second thing is for you to be frankly speaking. I've told you already when I gave the fifth point and the five ingredients of effective communication. 
that for you to be a masterful speaker, you ought to be really deeply thinking. I've said that if it's not truthful, then it is not masterful. So for us to be really masterful speakers, we can only we can only help people by being by speaking the truth to them. You know, I believe that a lot of motivational speakers actually rather than motivating people demotivate them rather than helping people we harm them because we tell them a lot of things we we try to pump them up emotionally but but let me tell you something as a masterful speaker while you're interested in, in, in getting people emotionally excited that's not all you want to help people ultimately to to find the truth to tell them what something really is to be realistic with them and then yeah that's not all you know there are people who have actually made a bad rap of what it means to be a frank speaker those people they are so critical they speak acidic words that burn the hearts of the people who listen to them with their very crazy vitriolic criticisms they crush the spirits of the people that they purport to talk to they crush their spirits they dampen their souls they dampen their spirits now those people the the, the very terrible destructive critics in our society they've made a bad rap of what it means to be a truth speaking masterful speaker i don't think those people are speaking the truth so as masterful speakers we must not only be frankly speaking but we must be frankly speaking in a way that is number three which is a third now a, a, a tenet of what it means to be a masterful speaker you ought not only to be frankly speaking but you must be frankly speaking in a way that is audience lifting audience lifting remember what Martin Luther King Jr. did in that most famous speech, I have a dream. What he did was he actually took that very talk and he raised the hopes of the Negroes towards the end of his speech. I have a dream that someday, that someday. And he told them before he even went into that constant refrain and it, the ringing of his voice in that marvelous refrain that has echoed through many years afterwards. I have a dream. What it did was it lifted the spirits of the people who listened to him. So masterful speakers or intended masterful speakers, be deeply thinking, be frankly speaking, but yet be audience lifting. So at this point, I am going to come to an end. Uh, now, there are many other things that you ought to do for you to be in the masterful speaker. This is not just all. This is just like 1% of the many things. Other things would be that you have to polish on your grammar, right? You want to do that. You want to polish on your grammar. You want to... Uh, master spoken English. You want to have the ability to speak the English language with fluency and confidence. Definitely, you want to do that. Then you also want to develop yourself in such a way that you prepare uh, uh, for your most memorable speaking engagement so that whenever you speak somewhere, there is a memorability to your speech, to, to whatever you say to the people, how you make them feel and what you make them realize, the enlightenment you give them and the excitement you give them. There is a way for you to do it. Do it. There is a preparation that will set you up for delivering a presentation that is memorable. Another thing you ought to develop the skills for in order for you to be indeed a masterful speaker is for you to learn how to get and sustain speaking platforms. You need to learn how to get and sustain speaking platforms. But that's not all. You also need to learn. You also need to learn how to how to uh, how to host your own event. You ought to learn how to host your own event, and then you need to learn how to coach people how to coach people so all of these things that i have just shared with you today we actually get a lot of trainers from the uk usa canada south africa cameroon ghana very soon gambia to train the best of the best coaches we partner with them at the friendship leadership institute masterful speakers network and we are hoping that in september you'll be a part of us it's gonna it's a one month experience and then you also do practice exercises you do practice exercises that are coach guided so we give you feedback on the on the practice exercises 
uh, that you do. I can give an example of the kind of feedback that we give maybe after uh, to today's class. So at this moment, let me pause. Let me hear you guys. If you do have a question, if you do have uh, a contribution, um, I'll be willing to take it. So I want to appreciate Musa Aiba, interesting deliberation here. I want to appreciate Abdulaziz Badije, uh, interesting indeed. Ebrahima Sise, uh, indeed a great coach. Thank you, Ebrahima. You, you are an amazing person. I, I We couldn't have done this without you. Then Abdulaziz Badije, thank you, thank you, thank you. So who has a question or who has a comment? Alahagi. Uh, Kasama, do you have any comments or do you have any question at all? Um, good evening, Master. I I must express how excited I'm, I am about your presentation. Thank and you, brother. Speaking, I have, I have um, drive a lot of inspiration from your um, presentation and I hope one day i will also become one of the most powerful and motiv motivational speakers in the, in the world thank you thank you very much awesome brother awesome thank you so much i love your voice you speak with some passion you speak i love the projection of your voice and i'm sure that we can work together immediately after this i really appreciate that you guys get into my dm and we connect so let us get to abdul aziz badji abdul aziz Abdul Aziz, could you unmute yourself? And um, do you have any question? Do you have any contribution? Ibrahim Asisi. Yes, uh, good evening, sir. Okay, Abdul Aziz, great. Go ahead, please. Yes, I'm indeed uh, happy. That yeah. Uh, to be part of you guys here. Uh, though I was late due to some circumstances, but I'm, I'm, I'm happy and I'm glad that you actually put a lot on the topic and then you made it uh, like you made justification about it. So we are actually pleased that uh, you made it for us. Yeah, thank you. And hoping that we can collaborate a lot. Yeah, definitely, you know. Abdulaziz. Thank you, brother. I, I didn't really hear you very well, no problem. I really didn't hear you very well, but no worries at all. Now, let me get to, I think somebody uh, dropped the question over there in the chat. Ibrahim Asise said, you talked about clarity and it's about exactness and so I lost that point. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, it's about clarity and precision, precision. And don't worry, the, the replay, is going to be available so you can watch everything that we've talked about so far i do hope that the audio the audio quality is good because somebody gave me a feedback initially that the audio quality was bad i do hope that indeed the audio quality is good all right so did you get it ibrahim asise mamado jello yeah, mamado yeah. jello what's up okay ibrahim do you want to say something Yes, I said I, I, I got it now. I, I'm going to do that. Okay, Mamadou Jello, what's up? All right, thank you so much. Any questions at all? Then, um, then, okay, yeah, that that's it. Mamadou said, I believe there's a great discussion. I personally learned something. Thanks for the efforts. I really appreciate it. So friends, let us connect. Uh, if you attended, make sure that you go into the chat room and let us know that uh, you participated. And if you really want to connect with me, all you have to do is to send me a WhatsApp message on plus 234-904668-7282. Or that is it, plus 234-904668-7282. Nine zero four six six eight seven two eight two. Let me do that again. Plus two three four nine zero four six six eight seven two eight two. My name is David Lawal. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can write it. 